So John Venus and his wife recently uploaded a more in-depth explanation as to why they've chosen to view animals as a resource instead of individuals worthy of our respect. It's a painful video, so I'm not going to put you through the whole thing, but there are some points that need to be addressed so that people don't get the idea that what they're doing is morally acceptable. Of course, we're not here to try and justify ourselves because we know that there's so many people who are just trying to twist and turn everything we say no matter what. Yeah. Well, I think it's important that when you're making moral decisions that involve direct victims, a justification is 100% necessary. The hatred out there right now on the vegan community towards us is just insane. I think it has a little bit to do with the current climate of the world. Actually, I think it has more to do with the fact that you've chosen to intentionally abuse and murder animals. They, they don't understand what's going on. We haven't really, you know, shared anything personal. So it's all speculation and we don't want you guys to think that we are some sort of monsters. Well, I don't think it's all speculation. I mean, what you're about to tell us about your new enthusiasm for hunting animals would in fact make you a monster, especially through the eyes of the deer. This is a conscious decision that we made for our family because we truly believe that a vegan lifestyle sometimes is not optimal for everyone. Here he goes again with the optimal diet nonsense. And check out my video with Dr. Garth Davis where we address the health claims in more length. And that is something that you know may or may not be true. We're not saying that we own the truth here, but we as a family feel that way and we have to do what feels right for us and nobody should have the right to say that that is a wrong thing. We as a family think hunting down defenseless deer feels right for us and no one who cares about animals has the right to tell us that's a wrong thing. Let me put this in a different context. I've decided to kill children. No one who cares about kids has the right to tell me that this is a wrong thing. I thought I would be vegan for the rest of my life yeah. because uh, of the values uh, behind veganism that I really, really deeply believe in. I thought I would be against animal abuse for the rest of my life because I thought animal abuse is wrong. It is the fact that it is more challenging and more risky for us, we feel, to do something that is required more special attention. It's actually challenging and risky to eat a plant-based diet, but it's not challenging and risky to go out into the woods with a loaded gun and shoot bullets into deer. We feel like it is the safest option to do what we're doing right now, which is incorporating some animal products, because, you know, it, the fact is that it's, it's more difficult not to. It's so difficult and inconvenient to well plan a diet and supplement where needed, but it's not difficult and inconvenient to hunt wild animals for their flesh. We believed it was very, very, very black and white before, but the more we understand how it is and how a lot of times it isn't necessary for people to eat those animal products due to many different reasons. It's necessary to eat animal products, even though the scientific consensus is on the side of a well-planned plant-based diet. We can't focus on shaming people for being wrong and for being animal abusers and horrible human beings. It's just not helpful. It's not progressing the human race forward. Uh, in a good way. We can't shame people for abusing animals. We can't shame people for abusing children. We can't shame people for being mass murderers. In fact, we should never shame any immoral behavior. But we can shame people for shaming people. Okay. I'm not here to say that anyone who's eating animal products, whether it's factory farmed or horribly sourced, are bad people and that they're wrong in doing so. Well, hasn't his tune changed? when you see the cruelty that we're causing these animals. There's nothing manly about pushing your power over someone else who is, you know, incapable of defending themselves. This is the world we live in. This is a system in place. It's sad. It's, it's not what we feel comfortable with. Well, we can say that the unaware consumer is not as morally culpable as the aware consumer, but we can emphatically say that their action of buying those products has grotesque consequences for animals and would make you an animal abuser if you continue to knowingly support these industries. But we don't judge people for the, the choices that they're making. We always judge people in every circumstance when it comes to morality. I mean, who doesn't judge a dog abuser or a child rapist? When my, I did my little experiment was oysters, uh, mussels and some eggs. Oysters and mussels are not sentient to the extent that say a fish or cow is. And I know this is a topic of contention, but they do have the beginnings of nerve ganglia, which is why I avoid them to give them the benefit of the doubt. The egg industry is not ethical no matter which way you look at it. You can find my video on backyard eggs here. And then that evolved into wild caught fish. It's scientifically proven fish feel pain similar to mammals, so to needlessly kill them for food is unethical. And wild caught game. The wild caught euphemistic language is just a deceptive way of explaining murder to lessen the perceived moral impact of what he's doing. Wild caught game is simply innocent animals hunted down and murdered in cold blood. In addition, we have switched our perspective on a lot of things to do with the environment and uh, even ethics. 
and we are trying our best to source everything locally. We basically changed our ethical stance on animal abuse and of course if a farm or slaughterhouse is local to you, that completely exonerates you from the enslavement and the murder. We're trying our best to grow our own food now. So we're, this is a new journey for us, trying to grow our own vegetables, berries, also foraging yeah. in the forest, we're gonna, when blueberries are in season, mushrooms, we're gonna mushrooms and blueberries and yeah. a lot of different um, types of berries mm -hmm. as well. It's so great that you're so privileged to work from home and have space and time to be able to have your own food garden and forage for edible berries in your own forest. Um, as well as, uh, you know, the animal foods being wild caught stuff. So stuff from the nature, we're in a valley right now with an abundance of deer. Wow, it's great to know you have an abundance of wild animals to go out there and slaughter. This is just not practical for the 8 billion people on earth. It's just selfish, privileged nonsense and in no way offers a solution for the world. That are, they're overpopulated and a lot of fish in the sea and in the rivers and in the mountain waters. So that is how we're sourcing our animal products right now. He speaks of there being a lot of fish in the sea like it's in any way sustainable. He's promoting seafood consumption which is responsible for the most animal deaths every year. One to three trillion. And if we keep fishing at this rate, we could be looking at fishless oceans by the year 2048. And again, dragging a fish out the ocean by their face and suffocating them is comparable to hooking a dog in the face and drowning them. An abundance of deer that are, that are overpopulated. He also spoke of deer being overpopulated, like overpopulation is some kind of justification for murder. Bite Size Vegan has a great video on this topic to check out. Hunting is a major cause of deer overpopulation because hunters focus on shooting bucks, which skews the ratio of bucks to doe, leaving more females for the buck to mate with, leading to higher all-round deer numbers. Wildlife agencies make a lot of money from selling hunting licenses, so one of the ways they increase this opportunity is by clear-cutting forested areas to create habitat ideal for unnaturally increasing deer populations. There's also the insane environmental justification hunters love to use as a way of sounding virtuous, that overpopulated deer hurt ecosystems and that's why we should murder them. Well, if you already didn't know, human beings are the most environmentally destructive animal on Earth, especially when you take into account our consumption of animals. Animal agriculture is the leading cause of deforestation land use, water use, species extinction and ocean dead zones. So hey John, should we use the overpopulation environmental argument for murdering humans? Humans cause by far the most damage in the world. Or does this justification only apply to animals because you view them as nothing more than meat machines that are undeserving of moral consideration? What's the excuse? They aren't intelligent like us? Well, neither are the mentally handicapped. Is it okay to hunt them? Name the specific trait that makes hunting animals okay, but hunting humans immoral. There are of course more ethical solutions we could entertain to control deer, like contraceptive programs. And they were overrun with deer. And of course, the critics are all saying, well, you might do something with those deer, but you certainly aren't gonna decrease the number of deer. That's what happened to fawn production over just the first four years. We started this in about 93 or 94. A 60% reduction. But you will continue to have a parade of skeptics and critics who come through Pittsburgh and other places and say, you can't reduce a deer herd with contraception. That, folks, is not my opinion. That's data. I think we should be more focused on developing these technologies instead of hunting. Not everyone lives in areas where they're able to get local hunted meat or fish. Uh, not everyone's going, going to be able to walk out your door and just go fishing, right? So that's going to be different for everyone. So we're not trying to look down to anyone who's doing things differently. We're not judging anyone. So the journey I'm going to take is stalking defenseless animals and shooting them in the heart. So my plan is to become a hunter and hunt, uh, you know, deer and moose and these things myself. And, you know, we come from a family with a lot of hunters. So this is the journey and the path that I'm going to take. My whole family are animal murderers because that's just our journey. Especially for me as an ethical vegan of five years, I think it's really important for me, for my personal journey, to hunt and kill these animals myself. As an ethical vegan for five years, I think it's so important to murder animals myself. Because I don't, I'm not saying that everyone has to kill their own animals if they're going to eat them, but that just feels like the path for me. Uh, and that is something that I've chosen to do and I am looking forward to that experience. There's something about shooting an innocent animal and watching them suffer and bleed out that I'm just really looking forward to. John, don't kid yourself, you were never an ethical vegan. You know, doing something that has been done for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. You know, rape, slavery and child murder have been happening for thousands of years. I'm looking forward to continuing those outdated barbaric traditions. 
And again, we're not saying that this is a sustainable way for the whole world to eat. This is just our journey right now. Exactly. You see, John and his wife aren't thinking of the bigger picture. They're looking at this through a completely selfish lens. Hunting is not practical for 8 billion people and completely sustaining yourself from your own food garden is only doable for very few people. But what is practical? Advocating a vegan lifestyle. This is achievable and makes the most sense ethically and environmentally. Some of the personal changes that I personally noticed after incorporating more animal products. The reason I started murdering animals again is... Cramps uh, went away completely. Cramps. So I don't know what it is, but it w there was something in those oysters and eggs that really made my muscle cramps go away. Dr. John Venus says oysters and eggs magically heal cramps. And the other difference was... The other reason John is going to start hunting and killing animals is... My skin. His skin. And I personally can see a difference, maybe you cannot. Of course, his skin looks so much different here. Not at all. But you know, a small cosmetic difference matters more to John than causing the suffering and death of animals. I mean, just for some backstory, this is John when he had bad acne as a meat eater. Uh, my energy levels, you know, shot up. Also, my acne cleared up even more. And this is him after going vegan on the right. Because we didn't have any serious health issues, there hasn't been a huge change, right? So here he's admitting there were no serious health issues. So basically he's gone back to treating animals like shit for nothing. Again, we're not, you know, going from one, you know, extreme mindset to another we're trying to stay open and, and uh, you know look at things from uh, all angles yeah because hunting down defenseless animals is not extreme right and just staying true to ourselves and how we feel from moment to moment basis I wonder how he'll feel the moment he shoots a deer and leaves her babies without a mother and doing what feels ethical and right for our family does that feel ethical and right for your family what about the deer's family fuck them though right yeah and we also think there's like so much we can learn just about the way the world works the way about how uh, the whole food production works there's just so much information uh, and you know you can't be a perfect human yeah. not causing any harm or any death to any any animals because right. you know if you want to survive you are gonna cause that towards mm -hmm. someone right so i think it's just important to realize that you know no one can be perfect or live in a perfect world without any death or suffering that's just not realistic right so yeah. <sighs> veganism has never claimed to be perfect and just because we cause some amount of harm does that mean we should go out and murder whoever we want this mentality isn't factoring in rights violations everyone seems to understand that premeditated murder of human beings is wrong but when it comes to hunting animals like deer we don't hold the same moral standard Plant production is also not perfect, and yes, you're always going to cause some amount of harm by existing. But does that make the act of killing a deer in cold blood morally justified? We all know that civilization causes death to humans and animals. Humans and animals die in construction accidents. Humans and animals die in road accidents. Humans and animals are harmed on plant farms. I'm not for abolishing plant agriculture, letting billions starve. I'm not against cars or construction, and I'm not in favor of abolishing civilization. These industry deaths, although they're not ideal and should be improved, we recognize the nature of the context as justifiable different to the flat-out premeditated murder of humans or deer. And we're not saying that uh, we are now, you know, more ethical than vegans because we're killing less yeah. animals, but it is an interesting perspective to understand that it is possible, even if you eat animals, to, to kill less lives than if you are 100% vegan. Well, John, you haven't established that your diet causes less death. Give me a calculation that a nutritionally adequate hunting, egg-eating, wild-caught fish eater's diet causes less deaths per calorie than a well-planned vegan diet. A plant eater is not responsible for every animal killed in a crop. We're only responsible for the number of deaths per calorie. And the best data we have is this study here where plant foods per million calories cause the least death. And this doesn't even factor in the slaughter of dairy cows and the trillions of marine animals murdered every year. Another point, imagine saying, hey, vegans cause some crop deaths, so I'm gonna start killing dogs. I'll kill less lives. Kill less lives. Or, hey, I'm gonna start killing humans. I'll kill less lives. Kill less lives. I in no way agree with the position that hunting is the solution. Imagine scaling this up and trying to feed the entire world of 8 billion people hunted game. For one, it's impossible. We'd still need factory farms to do it, we'd still need to feed them crops, and we'd still be murdering billions of animals. We should all know by now, most crop deaths are caused by animal agriculture, as farmed animals, including grass-fed animals, are fed harvested hay, crops, and grain. But people just love to compare hunting for flesh to monocropping, for example, which is just a false equivalency. Even though I don't 
don't grant that adding hunting and fishing to your lifestyle somehow causes less death than regular veganism, let's instead compare to the best case scenario for plants. Let's say vertical farming or veganically grown potatoes where you'd cause almost zero animal and insect harm. Peter Joseph calculated that if we applied vertical farming to existing agricultural land, we could provide enough food for 34 trillion people. Now we could move towards these more ethical ways of plant farming that cause zero animal death, but it can never be ethical to murder an animal against their will. If we all like John just threw our entire vegan principle out the window, we would never move to a world that views animals with respect. If we start advocating and promoting murdering deer and fish, we're always going to see animals treated as nothing more than resources. Now as a vegan animal rights activist who cares about the bigger picture, the solution we have for the whole population right now is practically applied veganism. We can't all source our dietary needs from backyard gardens, veganic or vertical farms right now, and we definitely don't want to go out and murder random innocent animals. Veganism is affordable, doable, and something nearly everyone in a civilized world can achieve. We're all just doing what we can, what is best for us, what is best for everyone everything else and we all all have to make this decision uh for ourselves. To look onward to a better world, it won't be the murderous mentality of hunting innocent beings that will get us there. It's the principle of veganism and respecting animals that will drive us towards the world we want to see. Thanks for watching. Don't listen to John Venus and be vegan.